Welcome to Radio Fixer's channel. Subscribe for upcoming videos. All right, this is another John's radio that his daughter brought it to me. Asked me to check it to see if, if they are repairable or not. This is 1955 Westinghouse clock radio, model H. 487T5. After I had the opportunity to check the radio, I'm going to list of the thing that we're going to cover in this video series. We're going to disassemble the radio, test all the tubes and replace the bad tubes, check all the resistor and replace the bad one, check and replace electrolytic capacitors, check and replace paper capacitors, replace non-polarized electrical cord, check the clock and repair as needed. You want to repair or fabricate broken antenna bracket. You want to fabricate three missing clock knobs, repair plastic cabinet crack and polish the cabinet of course. Save cabinet decal, or they call it a sticker. Reassemble the radio back together. We're going to test the radio and hopefully everything's going to work out. So let's get it started. I already took it out of the case, of course. There's four screws that it goes each corner. I think one of them was missing. I need to find some replacement for it. I checked over the case. Of course, need to be polished uh, all over the case. This is the Westinghouse uh, radio. As you can see, it has a tube layout. He marked it as 132. I believe this was radio 132. The model is H487T5, T.S. Tom. So the case needs to be uh, taken care of, just clean, polish, is a plastic case. As you see, it has a stress crack here, right here. It's, uh, I don't know if you can see it or not, right here too. So somehow I need to reinforce it from inside, uh, right here, so it doesn't get worse. You see how it went all the way here. So I need to somehow to do that to make sure the crack does not continue. It's a very thin plastic, as you see, it's a plastic, and uh, so it is fragile. But everything else looking good. Okay, let's put this aside. I'm glad it has all this. Uh, somehow I need to preserve this. As I share with you, they see there's a glue. They usually put glue and they stick this on top of it. So we need to protect this later so it doesn't fall apart. I'm going to put this aside. Let's focus on this. This is a beautiful radio. Very unusual to me. See, it has the date of the month. Also, what day it is. Uh, pretty interesting. The clock does not work. Here all these knobs are missing, so I need to create those knobs for this radio. I need to go online and look at a couple of, if I can find some picture, so I can recreate that. The antenna was repaired with glue as you see here. And the speakers in the back, I don't know how the sound is going to be. It's still the speaker is in perfect condition. As you all know, the first thing we need to cover that. It's a five tube. See if there's one, two, three, four, five. Let's look underneath. Seems this was repaired. Uh, these are, as you can tell, are not original. This capacitor definitely we know is bad. They all need to be replaced. I will check this and uh, to see if they are okay or not. It seems like this. Maybe John or someone else replaced this. I don't know how long ago they replaced it. Uh, so I want to check those. There's another capacitor here that needs to be replaced. One thing with this radio, it had a note here. I see him numbered at 132. It's, of course, to say this is Westinghouse, as we saw, as a red clock radio. And that was very nice. It takes note about all this. 2010, 
be replaced those capacitors so definitely I need to check them to see if they are okay or not September 27 2010 it was installed new filters it said it has a Gazi 50C5 it's humming uh, there's a noisy 12BF6 and it say he changed the first IF with 56k across section he changed that to his double oscillation so I need to figure out what that is all about but it's good that he left the note at least I know what has been done with this radio you know when his daughter brought this this was still on the radio you know and she said this was part of the radio which I'm glad I went on antique radio form put some information about this and people told me where I can find the schematic and of course it's 1955 as you see uh, the schematic is not that clear you know so I'm glad he put note here the schematics is very really small so I to read it was pretty difficult first thing cover the speaker all right lead for the yogurt I put a couple of holes here so the speaker and I safe you see so if by mistake I drop the tool <laughs> or uh, move in the wrong, I'm not going to put my finger in the speaker. It is very important. Please cover it. it. You know, it happened to me, you know. So after that, you know, I always, always, first thing I do, I cover the speaker. As I mentioned, first I'm going to test these capacitors. They were replaced about 13 years ago. I cut the negative side out as you know testing the capacitors one side be disconnected I'm going to leave enough space for myself that I can solder it to it when I put a new capacitor I use a pigtail I don't like to get and clean all the pens because a few other wires went to that pen this type of tubes the pens you know that you solder they are very fragile so I'm going to cut here so be able to test each capacitor you know so of course this tool is the best thing to use go right here okay it's cut so let me move it here away from everything let's see if they're okay or not these capacitors are the good examples of you know, as I mentioned in several videos, some capacitors are marked positive. You see, this is positive sign, the positive side. Uh, all new capacitors, they mark negative. But you see, both of them are positive. So the positive, of course, is this side. The negative is other side, of course. Just want to check it to see if they're still okay or not. Oh, wow. Very off. When I looked at the schematic, as I mentioned with you, it was really hard to read the schematic. There should be each of them 50 microfarad. This is 72. Let's check the other one. This one goes right here. This one also is very off. So we're going to replace both of them. I was planning to replace them anyhow, but I want to know after this many years, are they still good condition or not? All right, let me get a start on this. As I mentioned in the past, before you cut anything, if you're brand new doing this, don't remove everything. Just first take a lot of picture, document where each of them go. And if it's possible, change, you know, one at a time. Make sure to take a good documentation. Believe me, you know, if you start taking all the capacitors out, it's hard to remember where they go. All right. One thing I noticed that he installed 160 volts capacitors 47 microfarad you know you can find 50 but you know it's, it's getting harder to find those and it's much more expensive than uh, 47 47 should work with this of course always a good idea to test your new capacitors because some of them might be defective so this one is fine as you can tell you see what this one i was mentioning earlier you know how they mark negative and the other one I showed you earlier was the mark positive side and so this one is fine always test take a couple of seconds to test that you don't want to install something and then later on you realize it was a bad part this one is fine too all right so I'm going to install this too so what I will do I'm going to 
combine this like this you see the negative side go over to over each other then of course gonna bend them a little bit twist them and then I will show you what I'm gonna do okay so I twist it like that and this is the negative side right okay then I'm gonna add some wires here all right, as you see here, I made a pigtail here. Make gonna make another one this side, right that. I'm using just a small screwdriver like that, the smallest one I have. Just twist this around here, like that. See? Now I have two pigtail here, as you see it. So this wire insulation can go right in here. So this goes like that, then I can solder it right here. Same concept other side. In the middle is a little different. Got about an inch of take these wires out. Of course, I'm going to get some thicker one, not this small one like this. The thicker one. Next size, then I can make the pigtail like this like that all right then i get this and just twist it like that so it goes in the in that hole then i can solder here as well see that so anyway these are the trick i use then if you have a tool like this is really very really helpful i can solder all of them I turn this around now I'm going to make sure this solder is this side as well. Alright, this one is finished too. I cut a small piece of this shrink uh, tube. So I already did the other two as you can see. You're going to cover this one as well. You can use a lighter or a heat gun to do this. Uh, go quickly over it okay i'm going to cut the extra leads off of course this is ready to be installed okay pull this capacitor out as you see the 0.01 400 volts this is shows 13.79 nf the max should be 0.011 so it is over so we're going to replace it. Create this to make my job much easier i'm going to check to see what type of capacitors so like what type of capacitor I have insistent telling me this is the you know the film capacitor what size I need 103 they call this yellow jacket of course and uh, here also the system tells me if it's a macro ferret 0 0.01 that's the minimum I can use and that is the max value uh, if it's off those range, then the capacitor is not a good capacitor. I create this again to make my job much easier. As you notice, I remove some of the tubes. I document all the locations, uh, so later on be easier to install. Always is a good idea to document them. And the last one is here. Let me show you. It's pretty hard to get to. And meanwhile, I was checking here, I saw the clock wires. And I'm going to put a picture up here for you to see. Here, it actually, this knob, it start eating up the wire, you see? You see how green it is? That's not good. Somehow, I need to take all this out and try to fix it. See, when I press it back, it comes again. That's not good. It ate a bunch of wires and it made a short to here. Maybe that's why the clock wasn't working. Gee, that's another thing I need to work on. I wasn't planning to raise the clock portion out. In the notes mentioned this uh, first transformer was replaced. As you see, this is Philco. I believe John installed Philco here as he mentioned in his note. This is Westinghouse. This is Philco. So I'm going to remove this antenna. 
to so be able to get to the vacuum tube because there's no way I can get there and remove it. So let me remove this. I really don't want to take tons of things out, but sometimes you have to. This small tube, you know, the pen, it always they bend. See how rusty they get and they bend, all need to be cleaned and reinstalled. I'm going to test all the tubes to make sure they're okay. Before I test them, I'm going to clean all the pens. You see the pens are rusty and dirty, so I want to get a good reading on my tube tester and all these tubes. So let me work on this. All right, the wires both unsoldered. One I soldered right here, the other one up here because down there it was difficult to do that. Unloose this screw, of course. All right, I'm gonna put this aside and later on I need to fix this too. The screws are coming apart. Again, I don't like to take everything out, but sometimes you have to, you have no other choice. I want to just focus on the tube at this time, that clock later I need to figure out what I need to do with it, how to get in there. Hopefully that's going to be easy. Hopefully it's not going to be a lot of work. Let me check underneath. You see they stamped that piece, see right here and here. I wish it was a screw instead of stamped. Darn. See this water head in here is dangerous. Let me work on the radio first and worry about the clock later. The reason I took the tubes out so I'd be able to test all the resistors. You know, when the tubes are there, sometimes it doesn't give you a good reading. I have to go and test all these resistors. One more tube to take out. Okay, this tube is also out. See, that's why I had to take the antenna out. There's no other way I could pull it out. I'm going to document this one, what it is. I think it says 35W4. Okay, quickly add the tube that is 50, 35, 12, 12, 12. I list all of them. The total of voltage is 121 volts, as you see right here. 121 volts. But my phone also shows the same. I add them all together. So we are fine. So you can handle you know, the electricity. Because ours is about sometime 120, 21, not higher than that. So that is good if you add all this tube value voltage and you're going to end up to 121 volts. All right. Now all the tubes are out. I can test all the resistors to see if they're in good range or not. I test all the resistors. <clears throat> this one, since it's hooked up to both 50 microfarad capacitors, it's putting too much power on this. Usually, these resistors, it goes bad, as you see. It shows 2.28K, but when I run it through the database with those colors, if I select it, brown, green, red and of course silver that is should be 1.5 k minimum 1.4 k maximum 1.7 k so you see how off this is this, this is a 2.28 again is because this is hooked up to those capacitors large capacitors and uh, Majority of radio I work on, that's the first resistor I check. And those are usually the one go bad. So anyway, we're going to replace this. As you notice, this capacitor is changed. I changed this one. I installed this. Right here, I put a zip tie here. So this is holded pretty strong. Of course, I installed the new resistor. One side of capacitor is here other one is there that I installed. Already cut these wires, this as well. Uh, this is non-polarized. It's still in very good condition, but it is non-polarized and I always change it with polarized, uh, you know, quartz. Uh, that's much safer. Then when you install, you know, you always make sure, of course, uh, the negative or ground goes to the chassis, which is right here. 
and this side it goes to this plug here I assume this is for toaster or something like that and then from here it goes to the to the switch so I already cut it I'm going to remove it had a couple of insulation over those wires already remove it I might just add it to the new one so let me remove that we have one more capacitor goes to this pan as well as right here so let me unsolder this thing and install that one too all right as i mentioned all the resistors i test this was the only one was very very off range and that of course was replaced let me install the capacitor and also this change this cord and get back with you Again, here in US, is it see there's different size. You see that there's a different size than other. The larger one always neutral or negative. You know, this side is a hot or positive. You see they're different size. So we know this small size is a positive. So now we have to test because you see there's no marking in some of the wire we use. So the easiest way to double check, get a multimeter, set it in the sound right here, right? So you just put, you know, one side to the small portion, then check the wire like that. See, there's no sound. You see, this is sound. So this side is going to be hot side that attached to here. So what I do to remember which one is what, I highlight this. So when I install, I know which one goes to the chassis and which one goes to the switch. And so that's just for the safety. That's why I replace all of them. Hopefully this is going to help you. I'll be honest with you, it takes so much time to make these videos, editing, uploading, and make sure there's enough information that it actually makes sense, you know, if you want to follow. At this time, I want to take the opportunity and thanks my subscribers uh, with their uplifting comments. You always encourage me to upload more videos since this is just a hobby of mine. Again, I appreciate you. Enjoy all these videos and you all have an awesome day. Take care. If you're interested to see more videos like this, uh, feel free to subscribe to my channel and you will be notified uh, when new video being uploaded. You have a great day.